Hello everyone, welcome back. Irina here, your YouTube uh, wannabe historian, providing you uh, every once in a while with uh, interesting pieces of information about Nordic or Germanic culture and language. Um, so winter is coming um, and it might be full of unpleasant surprises this time. So let's uh, wait and see what it has in store and let's hope for a smooth sailing through this um, very problematic season, especially this year. Um, winter is called Wetter in Old Norse and if you want to speak of a great winter you are going to use the term Fimbulwetter which is also used um, in Scandinavian and German but it sounds kind of archaic. Um, Fimbul at the beginning of a word is actually a very poetic word and it um, can be combined with other words as well besides uh, Wetter but Fimbulwetter is very well known in poetry because it encompasses this um, uh, idea of three great winters preceding the twilight of the gods or the apocalypse, the Ragnarök. Um, and we find reference to Fimbulwetter in the Poetic Edda, so uh, in this collection of uh, Norse poetry written in um, uh, the 1200s, but the poems are a couple of centuries older than this. Um, and, for example, in the poem Vatru this small, uh, we find a reference to it in stanza 44. This is a poem where, um, yeah, generally speaking, the god Odin uh, has a dialogue with a very wise giant by the name of Vafthrudnir, and they ask each other questions, uh, testing their knowledge on the world of the gods, on um, um, cosmology, um, how the world is organized, and it it is going to uh, to end. So I'm going to quote to you directly um, from Old Norse and then uh, translate it to you. So the stanza 44 says the following: Fjold ek for fjold freisalak, fjold of rain dak regin, quat livir mana, thos en mara lider, fimbul vetter med firum. So greatly have I travelled, greatly have I tried. Greatly have I tested the gods, what shall become of mankind when at last the mighty winter will come to men. So Fimbulwetter, yeah, the mighty winter, great winter, tremendous winter, so whatever uh, word you can think of that um, expresses this idea of, um, of uh, greatness or augmentation of this general coldness, which is one of the omens, of the many omens preceding the um, Ragna Rök. Um, winter is also personified somehow, so if you're going to go to, um, if you're going to reach out to the other source, the Snorra Edda, the Younger Edda, written by Snorri Sturluson, the um, Icelandic chieftain and scholar, uh, in the same century, but the material is um, more structured and organized than the Poetic Edda, you're going to find in the section about um, how to create poetry, um, Skalskop um, you're going to find a couple of metaphors um, related to, uh, to winter, to how to describe winter, and um, uh, I think it is called the Stormbringer um, or the um, Killer of Snakes or something like that. Um, anyway, like I said before, this um, very poetic word fimbul can also be found in relation, uh, so attached to other words suggesting greatness. So, um, for example, you have in um, another poem from the Poetic Edda in Voluspor, the uh, prophecy of the Seerus, where there is a, a vulva, a prophetess, um, describing to Odin um, what uh, is going to happen in the future. Um, at some point, she is also going to tell something about what um, um, is happening after the Twilight of the Gods, after, after the uh, Ragnarok, and she says at some point that the gods will, uh, or the surviving gods, will gather once again on um, um, the um, Ida Völur, and then they're going to recall Fimbultus Fornar Runar. So they're going to recall the um, ancient runes of the mighty god. So ancient runes here in reference to um, knowledge and wisdom and the mighty god. Uh, so the god usually associated with um, um, secret knowledge, uh, spells and so on and so forth is um, Odin. Yeah, so speaking of Odin, 
Um, in other poems, for example, in Hovamol, the sayings of the high one, where Odin shares with us uh, a lot of pieces of um, uh, advice and um, uh, a lot of uh, what he's um, uh, experienced himself and what he has learned. Uh, from these experiences, we have uh, a couple of places where we are going to find the term Fimbulthule, um, meaning the mighty um, poet. So we have, for example, in stanza 141 from Hovamol, the following. Runar Munthufinna, Okravna Stavi, Mjokstora Stavi, Mjokstinna Stavi, Esfodi Fimbulthuller, Okkerdu Ginregin, Okreist Hrotte Rogna. So runes you will find in runic letters, very powerful runes, very great runes. Um, which the master poet painted and the holy gods made. So the master poet, we can um, also guess here quite um, uh, with quite some degree of certainty. It is also a reference to, um, to Odin because he is also the one associated with poetry. There is um, uh, the famous myth about him and um, the um, um, stealing of the meat of poetry. Uh, and speaking about this, um, you can also find here the term great fool, so also in Hovamol, Fimbulfambi, um, and this term um, is used after his in success in gaining the affection of a woman and uh, before his success in gaining the affection of another woman. And this another woman, this other woman is um, a giantess, uh, the daughter of a giant who actually uh, helps him um, gain uh, the uh, possibility, profit from the possibility, the opportunity to um, steal the mead of poetry. Um, and he has a pretty nice saying here. So he says that fool is the one who cannot say much. It is the law of the universe. So he basic, he's basically telling us to try to cultivate our wisdom and um, eloquence um, and um, uh, not to remain silent and always try to uh, express ourselves in a cultivated manner. Um, all right, um, you're also going to find in poetry the term Fimbulyov, um, which is mighty song. Um, and also um, in reference to some mythical rivers from this universe, uh, Fimbulthul, um, it's one of the rivers concealing the riches of the gods. This is also mentioned in some context by uh, Odin again in a different poem called Grimnismol, um, where again he shares some of his wisdom um, as a prisoner of uh, a king and he stands between two pyres um, and uh, well, yeah, at some point he has all these um, epiphanies, revelations, and he uh, shares a lot of his um, uh, great uh, knowledge. So Fimbulthul, this might mean something like the mighty roar, the roaring river, that would make uh, some sense. Um, so coming back to the first point I made in the video, um, Fimbulwetter, yeah, the great winter, um, it's um, um, become quite a common term uh, to describe yeah, different um, majestic occurrences, um, well, especially online. I found the term quite, uh, quite a lot in a lot of uh, articles about Norse mythology. I thought it would be interesting to um, share with you the actual origin of the term. Um, whether it had some kind of um, geological explanation that, um, yeah, on in the realm of speculation, I would say there is this theory that it might have something to do with the um, volcanic winter uh, having occurred, um, yeah, sometime in uh, in the sixth century, so five thirty-five, five thirty-six. Um, this event um, or the consequences of this um, um, event are mentioned in some sources, for example, uh, in uh, Procopius or Michael the uh, Syrian, and some historians do tend to link um, such, a, such a catastrophe with um, other events such as the plague of Justinian or the expansion of the uh, Turkic tribes. 
whether Germanic peoples were influenced by this event as well in creating their poetry. Maybe or maybe not. Maybe these myths are even older than this and they, you know, they transformed um, over time uh, while being transmitted orally and then we ended up with these references in the uh, poetic Edda. It's um, really very hard to, uh, to say exactly from, from where uh, these ideas um, stem and it's also a bit problematic to always um, try to resort to these um, geological, natural explanation, naturalistic explanations for um, uh, these mythological events. Yes, they are, they are indeed possible, but uh, in the same time, let us not underestimate the um, imaginative, creative powers of the human mind. All right, so uh, I wish you uh, not to have a Fimbulwetter. On the contrary, I wish you a very smooth and calm winter. And if you like my videos, please uh, subscribe to my channel and um, help it grow. I would really appreciate some support. Thank you very much and see you soon.